Welcome to Our Voices on the Yard, where Black artistic excellence meets everyday life. I'm your host, Denise Woods. Join me as we explore and celebrate the achievements of the Black artists that attended conservatories and fine arts programs from around the world, starting with my alma mater, the Juilliard School. Hi. This is Denise Woods, and welcome back to Our Voices on the Yard. Today, we have an extraordinary opera singer, Steve Herring. He's a tenor. I remember when I first started teaching at Juilliard, word had gotten around that there was a black woman in the drama division, and several students in the other divisions asked if they could study with me because they did not like the sound of their speaking voices. And Stephen Herring was one of them. Now, Stephen is a tenor, but he inherently has a different speaking voice and he wanted to tap into that speaking voice, which is just beautiful. But of course, you know, 30 years ago, well, not quite 30, but 25 years ago, when he was 25 years younger, his voice was high and in that tenor kind of thing. But Stephen didn't just want to sing opera. He wanted to do Broadway. He wanted to be an actor as well as a singer. And so he knew that he had to train his speaking voice. And he and I developed a wonderful friendship as a result of studying the speaking voice in conjunction to his singing voice, which then led to him telling people about me in the opera division, in the vocal arts department, and I started teaching voice, speaking voice, not at Juilliard, but at the Manhattan School of Music because word had gotten up to the Manhattan School of Music that there was a wonderful teacher down at Juilliard teaching voice, not the singing voice, but the speaking voice. And for an entire semester, I taught voice at Juilliard and at the Manhattan School of Music. And I can thank Stephen Herring for that. Even if he may not have made the connection, he sort of put it out there in the universe. I'm grateful for that. Enjoy Stephen Herring because he is a wonderful example of how to mesh a performing career with another career. He's an arts educator. He establishes arts programs, arts education programs around the country and he's very successful at it. He's been able to finagle his artistic life and turn it into something that is philanthropic, that is lucrative, and quite rewarding for himself. So this is going to be an interesting interview. Enjoy. Welcome to our, our Voices on the Yard. Yes. And our yard yeah, was yeah. the Juilliard School. So I'm, Juilliard I'm not going to start school. with Juilliard. I'm, I'm not going to start with Juilliard. I'm going to start a little bit before Juilliard. I like to come to Juilliard. Okay. And interestingly enough, sometimes the conversation is so rich, as this one promises to be, that we hardly even mm -hmm. get to Juilliard because our lives are so rich and so full and we're so blessed. Yeah. So I'm going to start yeah. by asking you, Okay. why opera? Meaning, did oh, opera come to you? Question, yes. Did you come to yes. opera? What was it? What was it about opera that just pierced your soul and your heart and you said, I've got to do this? So I think that's, I think the answer is twofold. I think um, it has to start at home because my mom, who was from Nicaragua, Bluefields, Nicaragua, um, came to the country in 57, I believe. Uh, but she always loved classical music. I mean, in, in addition to merengue and salsa and all that, she loved classical music. So she would always, uh, while she was washing dishes or doing something around the house, you know, the classical music station um, would be playing. And so I heard that. I heard that. Um, so I think that's probably the first thing that I've, I gravitated toward classical music because I always say at home, it was classical music and the car was jazz because my dad. And so those are two, my two loves, right? Um, 
But I, I went to a church, People's Congregational Church in Washington, D.C., um, and the music program at the church was stellar. It was stellar. Um, the, the, the musical giants who were at my church, Maddie Wilder Dobbs, who was the first Black soprano to have a contract with the Metropolitan Opera. She was right after Marian Anderson. Marian Anderson wow. had, you know, the single moment. Maddie Dobbs had a contract and sang there for, I, I think it was about 12 years, 12 or 13 years um, in leading roles. Uh, she also mm. um, was the first Black to sing at La Scala in uh, Italy and Milan. So she was a member of the church. And uh, as when I was coming up, she was, she had, I think, already retired from um, from the Met, but she was still singing. So she would sing on Sunday mornings. Um, and I, I heard that there were also artists uh, like Leroy Dorsey, who I'm sure we'll talk about um, later on in the conversation. I'll just drop that name. But he was a, a, a basso profundo, um, which means the, basically the, the lowest bass voice. Um, he sang at the church. Uh, and there were so many other classical artists that I heard. And, and so that, uh, you know, I grew up hearing that. I will also say, so now the, the, the answer is, is, is threefold, actually. I went to an arts really? high school, the Duke Ellington School of the Arts. Um, say that again. Can and, you just mention that high school one more time? Yes. The Duke Ellington School of the Arts. The Duke Ellington School for the Performing Arts. Is what it was when I was there. And I was there from ninth grade through 12th grade. And when I began to learn how I could access feelings um, in opera mm. that I couldn't in other styles, opera is so, it, 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 it needs all of you to work. Um, I always say by 10th grade, uh, I had already been bitten by the bug. You know, I was like, oh my gosh. Because I could access feelings that I couldn't. I just couldn't in in regular everyday speech, um, or, in other in styles theater. of music at church. Or musical theater. Or in, even. Or in musical theater. No, mm -hmm. I, I, I couldn't. There was something about the way that opera felt in my body. Mm. Um, I'm going to ask a question. Was it, yeah. was it the depth of musical expression that you felt was it was it a, a a a combination of musical ideas that just just sat in your spirit i would say it it it, it was probably the combination of musical ideas because when you're an opera singer yes you sing opera but you also sing um art songs uh which are, mm. are songs just written by various composers in a classical style throughout time. So you would sing art songs of Bach or Mozart, the, the few that he wrote, or Brahms. And art songs call on, as, as, as in the classical idiom, because again, you're an opera singer, it's a classical idiom, so sure. you do everything within, it, within that, that, that range. Art songs... You, you can't, you have to have heart. You have to, even at the young age of 14, which is when I went to high school, <laughs> singing these art songs and having teachers say, you know, you, you won't understand these songs really for another 20 years or so, you know? And I, I'm 14 at the time and I'm like, 20 years? But now I get it. But just, it's just... Uh, <laughs> Having having the experience of working on them and performing them and finding those emotions, I will always say I'm a, I'm an emotional singer, and and the singers that I gravitate to, uh, really tell stories. They tell stories. Absolutely. Um, were they songs so of I, love? I hope that answers the question. Were they songs of Were they songs of love? Unrequited love? Were, um, you know, the 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 classical themes that we gravitate yeah, toward I mean, for time in memorial. Yes, they were songs of love. They were songs of 
pain at times. They were songs of longing. Um, I, I will also say, as a classical singer, as, as, as a Black singer, um, or African-American singer, um, I was introduced to Negro spirituals. And I say Negro spirituals because when I was introduced to them, they, they were Negro spirituals. Um, right. we all, we, I think now we say African-American spirituals. But I was introduced to Negro spirituals in ninth grade. Mm. And of course, I was taught how to, to do research. We didn't have the internet then. So you had to go to the library and you had to, to read the history um, of enslaved people uh, to understand what it is that you were singing. So that's a whole other set of emotions that I was able to tap into and experiences that I was able to tap into and stories that I'd heard growing up that I was able to tap mm-hmm. into. Yeah. That all of those things grabbed, they, they just grabbed me. And I, I have to say, <laughs> as an opera singer, the grandeur of it. Ah. The grandeur of it. Got you. It's all so yes. just, what, there's nothing what like, musically, you know. Musically, musically, what makes it grand? What, what is it? What, what, what is the construct that makes it grand and clearly makes it classical? Because I huh. think the definition of, of a classic is something that withstands the test of time. It is just as important yes. today. The themes, the yes. musical ideas, you know, the structure, yeah. it, it holds up, yes. it stands up. Yeah. And so yes. what is it about that structure, the Italian structure of opera or, or the classical European structure? Right. What is it that holds up? Um, well, I would say first that, to personalize it, what holds up for me is my voice fits that better than anything else. Wow. It fits it like a, like a glove. <laughs> yes. Um, Italian music. Yeah, the Italian mm. operatic music. Um, and I had mm. teachers tell me that throughout mm-hmm. you know, my, my time as a young artist. And then mm. as, I, as I, when I, I guess my late 20s, early 30s, I began to understand, oh, it does fit. That fits me like a glove. Um, wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And but, I would say the but, music. But to your point, but to your point, you also, the, the Negro spiritual genre, the jazz genre, even yes. gospel music, you yeah. have a wonderful way of pivoting and, yeah. and, and really jumping from genre to genre. How are you able to, to make that authentic? How do, how do um, all of these wonderful genres fit you, Steve? Because I, and I think you said this before with the classical genre, it, it, it lasts throughout time. The classical technique, I have always believed, um, and I was taught this, I would say for most of the teachers I've worked with from the very beginning, always said the technique stays the same, the style changes. Ooh. So, if I'm singing a jazz song, I'm going to breathe. I'm going to think about the vowels, and I'm, I'll think about if I want to kind of distort the vowels. You know, but my breath, um, the, the breath support stays the same. That stays the same. Um, if I'm singing a pop song... <laughs> Uh, it stays <laughs> the same. I have to access those same things in my body to make it work. Mm. Does but that then, answer the so question? The, so if yeah. all of that, that totally answers the question, but what changes then? Is, or is there anything that changes? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So if I'm singing, um, if I'm singing a jazz song, uh, the emotions are the same. The emotions are the same right. as in opera, but they're not as big. They can't be as big. So in opera, it's ah, with jazz, it's ah. And you can do it. You, feel it's, free. Oh, yes. Feel free to demonstrate what you're talking about. <laughs> yes. 
One more time. Do, do it. I, in opera, it's this. In jazz, it's that. So I would say in opera, it's... Deep Roman soil, Martin Swall. In jazz, it's... That old black magic has me in its spell. It's... It can't be as big, unless that is the emotion that you want to convey. Um, I, Sarah Vaughan is my favorite singer. If I had to choose five, she's on that list of five singers that I love. Um, and again, in my dad's Mind car, me. I heard her all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so. Yes. But I, I, she's a perfect example of, of someone who could have gone either way. She could have been an mm. opera singer and a great opera singer. Mm. She chose jazz, but she used the mm. same style. And there were albums, mm. especially later on, where she played with uh, leaning more on a, a classical side in terms of style. Um, yes. But in the same song, Ooh, she'd flip spots. it around and it would be, oh, we're back to, yes, 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 right? <laughs> in the same song, she's back to bebop or something, you know? Um, I, I, yeah, that's, it's, it's the, the best way to say it is those styles it's great. have to change. The emotion is always the same. You always have to find a way to tap into the emotion. Um, of the piece. At least I do. There's singers who may Absolutely. not have to do that. Uh, but Absolutely. I always have to I do think, that. I always have to I, do I, that. I think that's, I mean, you know, if we didn't want to hear the true essence of, of the voice, um, then yeah. clearly emotion is not essential, but the true essence of the voice is supported by by the emotion. I mean, once you've yes. got the technique, yes. you got to put something to it. Right. Yeah, because Indeed. those Indeed. emotions color the sound. Ooh. Yeah, the, Ooh. I'm not saying those, those emotions when you say, when you say color, color the, the sound, sound, do you mean blanket, blanket it, blanket, blanket? In no, oh, I, no, I was, they, they, they color it. So it's like they. Oh, you said color. Oh, yeah. Color, yeah. The emotions yes. color the sound. And so. Jazz emotions will color it in one way. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. emotions in yeah. a, a Negro spiritual will color it often in a different way. Um, Absolutely. Uh, emotions in, in a Verdi or a Mozart opera uh, will color it in a different way. But we're always painting with these colors and it's all supported by the technique. It's beautiful. You know? Wonderful yeah. analogy. Wonderful analogy. I see that you've worked with a couple of my favorite artists, Jason and really? Alicia Moran. <sighs> and right. So you've got yeah. to tell me about work songs. Oh. Um, first of all, I have to say how much I love Jason and Alicia. I love them so much. Um Work songs was performed. Oh, before, at the before we get to can you tell the audience? Can you tell the audience who they are? Yes. So um yes. Jason Moran is uh, a jazz pianist. He is an educator. Um and many of the jazz pianists with that we hear today, uh and Jason probably wouldn't say this. But I will say that they, many of them are mimicking, I and mean, we always mimic our favorite artists, but, men, but Jason changed the way that jazz pianists use the instrument. Um, he opened the door for something authentic. Um, not saying that it was, but, but authentic, and he, uh, he, he gave, he gave, many of the jazz pianists today permission to do something different. Um, yeah. So that's the best way that I could explain, Jason. Alicia, mm -hmm. Alicia Hall Moran is uh, a singer, 
um, who in one second will be the, the most beautiful classical mezzo soprano, which is, uh, or you can say alto, but mezzo soprano, the most beautiful mezzo soprano, and then turn around, uh, and, and be the most haunting blues, jazz, whatever singer she wants to be. Um, she is a chameleon. She can do whatever it is, uh, that she wants. She's also an educator. She mm -hmm. is probably one of the smartest people um, that I know. Jason, I have to go back to Jason. Jason is, is a MacArthur Award um, recipient, I believe. Um, yes. And Alicia, oh my gosh. I don't believe Alicia is a MacArthur Award, but there's another great award than, that I can't remember. But they're, they're both well, really I wonderful. They're, they're and they're both composers. They're yes. I worked I worked with Alicia on uh, Gershwin's Porgy and Bess on Broadway. That's Did where you? I had the pleasure of meeting her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So yeah. I know yeah. I know these extraordinary artists. And when I looked at they're your bio and, and saw that you had worked with them and that you knew them well, tell us about yeah. work songs. Okay. So work songs um was performed at the fifty sixth uh um biennial at um oh, biennale if you will uh, in venice and uh work songs was a piece that <sighs> it spoke of the it it <sighs> I'm trying to think the best way to say it it was um it focused on the various work songs throughout history, basically. Um, some of those work songs uh, were really joyful and playful. Some of those work songs um, were really gut-wrenching. Um, but they, they put this piece together, Jason and Alicia, and uh, they brought in, I forget how many singers, it's probably 12, maybe 10 to 12 singers. Um, mm -hmm. It was always uh, two singers at a time in Venice for, let's say each singer was there uh, for maybe two or three weeks. And then they would switch out and bring in two more singers. Um, mm. So, and we lived in Venice. Uh, I was there. I think longer than, I think there was probably one other person who was there longer than I was. So I had the opportunity to um, perform with Alicia and Jason there, uh, which was a treat, is always a treat. Um, and then there was another artist who was there, uh, who I'll get the name for you in a little bit, um, because he's a beast. He's a beast. He lives in the wow. he's a beast. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Avis, and you have to know who he is. So I'll get that. I'll get his name for you. Um, That's fine. That's fine. But I want to know. I will. I yeah. want our audience to know exactly what work songs are. What it you know it's it 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 really has a life of its own. Yeah. And so tell us what that is. Yes. So work songs um, are songs that uh, many people. Well, peoples have sung throughout history. I would say, like, uh, for enslaved people, let's begin there. Um, so, uh, an example I'm a building me a home. Uh, or you can look at the chain gang. Who, yes. Work songs are, are songs that, that get people, they keep them moving, they keep them engaged, uh, they keep them distracted. Um, from mm. oftentimes the, the 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 anguish, the hell, the unnecessary mm -hmm. pain that they're dealing with at the time. Um, yes, work songs are beautiful, and I have to say, until my experience uh, in Venice with work songs, I wasn't. I was familiar, of course, um, but I hadn't done the deep dive un until then. Uh, mm. And and now I love them as I as I do the Negro spiritual as I do any uh, mm -hmm. operatic aria. 
Yeah. I hope, I hope that explains so, it. Does so that kind of explain? Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Tell me, is there a role? Is there a particular uh, composer that you've yet to do, that you've yet to perform, that you've yet to sing, mm. that you are dying to 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 mm. to perform? Uh, because I know a lot of actors, we have that particular role that we've worked on or in our in our minds or worked with a coach mm -hmm. on say for instance lady macbeth right now do right. i want to play lady macbeth no yeah. no no but i can remember <laughs> years of just you know working looking at the play working on the play with the coach with an acting right. teacher with the hopes of playing lady macbeth is there is there a particular role yeah that you say i gotta do this um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I knew it. I knew we all um, have that yes. one. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you know what? I, it's, it's, it's not, it is an opera. Uh, there is an operatic role, but it is not the, the, this particular okay. one is an acting role. What? Um, and it's Othello. Yeah. 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 I would love to. Um, I think I told you that I've, I've done, um, a bit of acting and, and I continue to take acting lessons, uh, from Mark Rizat. I don't think you know Mark, right? I don't. I don't think you know Mark. He was, he's a, he was a professor at Yale, um, for many years. Mm -hmm. And now I believe he is teaching here in New York. At Manus, I believe he's in Manus. Um, he's a wonderful. Uh, he he used to be a dancer at the Metropolitan Opera in his past life. <laughs> right, right. I love um, it. Yeah, but that that is a role. I would love to play and work if 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 only work on Macbeths. Yes. Yeah. Which which really begs the next question. Otello, sorry, Otello. Yeah. Otello, Otello, yes. Which begs the next question, what's happening in the opera world right now, all over the world, where finally <laughs> opera companies are casting Black men as Otello. Um, yeah. they, opera singers are pulling out of, of major, major uh, opera companies. Yeah. Black opera singers are pulling out because they are no longer in support of blackface when these roles are clearly mm -hmm. black people and historically have been played by mm -hmm. white people in blackface. Mm -hmm. So there, there is a huge mm -hmm. shift of consciousness going on right now in the opera world. Yes. And I'd like to hear you think on it. Um, and, and, and let's start with the, the current production in England, yeah. in the UK. Um, and let's talk about that. Now, which production? The current um, production uh, of Otello. The, the current production ah. of Otello that's been performed by the, the, the first time a black man has performed Otello in this, in this, this, this amazing historical company. Oh, no, the, the opera. Yes. The opera. Yes. Otello. Yes, 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 yes. So I, listen, I think I, th my take is not always <laughs> as popular as it comes is 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 the popular opinion and I, I i you asked so i will share this thank you um i'm not familiar with who's singing it right now in the uk mm -hmm. um uh but i and i think it is great if a singer can sing the role they should be hired to sing it yes whether they're black green blue and it should be equitable. Mm. Um, if you can sing the role, then you should be hired to sing it. Mm -hmm. um, if you cannot sing the role and you are black, <laughs> then you should not sing it. <laughs> if you cannot sing the role and you are white, then you should not sing it. I think regarding the controversy that's going on with the, that's happening now with, with, with black face, and I know there has been controversy with Aida, 
uh, the opera Aida by Verdi and, um, and people who are not black wearing the paint. That's not blackface. <laughs> it's stage paint. It's, there, there's a difference. And I think there's a historical difference mm-hmm. that is not being a part, that, that has not been a part of the conversation because we don't have nuanced conversations. That's right. About any of this. Yeah. So I, I, my take is, no, I think stage, stage paint is, it's, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's not blackface. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're out, they're not here, out here doing, you know, the, they're not doing that. <laughs> yes. They're singing the role of Aida. Yeah. Um, and this is so part of the my... reason, this is part of the reason why I wanted to do this. Our voices yeah. on the yard, because we are not yes, a monolith. Yes, our voices, that's right. We're not a monolith. <sighs> Exactly. You know, we don't exactly. all think the same. Exactly. We don't all express the same way. And so that's why I wanted to platform. And I applaud you and thank you for your input. And yeah. you, you prefaced it by saying it may not be the popular opinion, but it's what I. Right. Yes. Right. And, right. and you're saying if it serves, if, if the voice and if the emotion the voice, serves exactly. the character, may yes. the best artist win that role. That's right. Yeah. And I think that should be for everything. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, um, I mean, it, it opens up the can, it opens up the can of worms. Um, uh, yes, it does. Uh, and, and, and begs for discussion uh, that yes. African-American actors are having about black British actors coming right. to Hollywood right. and, you know, mm. it's called the British invasion. You know, it's right. open up the discussion. Let's talk about it. Let's get it out on right. the table. Let's let's be clear about it. And yeah. because again, we're not a monolith. We don't all think the same. So we're not. Is, no. We're not. And there must be there must be nuance in all of these conversations. Yeah. That that's real life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know, I remember. My father always said, "I says I did the college tour." <laughs> um. <laughs> I went to Catholic University for two years, mm-hmm. and we can talk about that whenever you want. But then I went to Howard University for a semester. I think we kind of talked about this. Um, and how? But, come, wait, and how come you were only there a semester? Come on now, why were you only there my, one semester? My parents were like, "You, you have to get out of here. You, uh, no, we're getting your butt up out of here. You need, to, you will finish school, but it won't be at Howard." <laughs> so. So, um, again, w- w- why was there only one semester at Howard? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was having such a good time at Howard University. Let me tell you, I was partying. I was dating everybody, every cute guy I could see. I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> and my parents were not having it. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. There was never a question as to whether I would finish college because in, in my household and in, in Jean and Lucy's household, you go to school from kindergarten through college right. and then you can do whatever you want. Exactly. So this, you know, I knew I would finish college, but I guess Howard was not it. Um, <laughs> but wh- I went to Howard for two reasons. And whenever you want to talk about it, we can, but I will tell you the second one now. Okay. Um, the second reason I went to, to Howard <laughs> was because I, I wanted the Black experience. I thought I was missing something because all of yeah. my friends had gone to Howard University. We, you know, we both love Ro- Roz White and um, all, these other, all the other people went to Howard University, Tarazi, everybody went to Howard University. And I was like, they were taking black, black lit classes and all of these things and just living. And I was like, I'm missing something. So I got to Howard University, had a ball. When I left Howard University, um, I realized I didn't have to go in search of the black experience. I'm black. Whatever my experience is, it's the black experience. <laughs> so that was an aha moment. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah. So, 
that, that's that. Then you know? where did you go? Then you left Howard and I left Howard and I um I I knew I had to go back to school. Uh, uh but I didn't I knew I either wanted to go to Curtis, the Curtis Institute of Music, or the Juilliard School. Um so I auditioned for the Juilliard School first. And at the time you let's say have an audition on Thursday, you do a callback, which is second audition, to see if they really want you on um Friday. And by Monday or Tuesday you knew if you had gotten in. I don't know that if they soon? still do it the same way. Wait, that soon? Yeah. That quickly? Yeah. Oh, that's yep. that's knew. wonderful. You know, yeah. as a and I think it, they only did that for a couple of years. Yes, it's okay. so good. Right? It was so good. Yeah. Oh. Um, so I was accepted uh, uh, into Juilliard, um, and so I did an audition for Curtis. Uh, um, and I, I, I think I may have shared this uh, in in one of our many conversations. I loved Juilliard. I had a ball at Juilliard. I uh, I may have had more fun at Juilliard than I did at Howard. Is it possible? Um, Wait, is it well, possible? Well, possible? well, only because, because... Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Just, because... Well, it was different front. It was different front. <laughs> okay. We were, we were, we were, I mean, in the drama division, in the drama yeah. division, we were working so hard. I mean, we, you know, played a little bit too, but the work... Nobody was worked. Just, it just never <sighs> let up. But, no. but tell me about what, see, that's what I'm loving about this. Because I'm yeah, learning yeah. what you got, so yeah. I'm, I'm learning what, what you did in the music division, what you did in the opera. It's like, you did that? We didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Which I have to say, guys did. I respect the drama students, so, and I'm sure it's still as rigorous. <laughs> I respect the drama department so much. Though you all worked, I mean, you sure did. We worked too in, in the music department. But those drama kids, ooh. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but that's why they all go on to have you know the careers. They have. <laughs> um, in the the music department, uh, we, you know, I was able to perform. I think I was in maybe three operas at my time at Juilliard, and this is an undergrad. Wow. Um, I didn't I didn't do grad, which. Uh, which was more than what they were doing in the graduate program. Um, I had a class with uh, Mary Lou Falcone, who um, at the time was probably one of the best PR people uh, for, for operas, uh, or, or maybe she was an opera agent, but I had a class with her. Um, so I got to know her and I got to know what people were looking for in the opera world. Um, and then we had all the regular classes, the, the voice classes and the theory classes, um, the sight singing classes, the his music history classes, all of those. But I met wonderful people there, which is why I had so much fun. Um, yeah. And I'm still in touch with many of those, those people. In fact, I had dinner with uh, maybe a group of five of them a couple of months ago, five wow. people from Juilliard. Um, yeah, those, those relationships have, have lasted. Um, but it was fun. We just, we just had fun, mm, you know, mm. um, was, was your transition out of Juilliard into the real world? Was it, um, an easy transition because you had that Juilliard training and the Juilliard name, the cachet that came with having gone to Juilliard was your transition relatively easy. Yeah. It was relatively easy. Um, I, after I, I left my, the year I graduated, I did an international tour of Porgy and Bess, um, uh, which toured the UK, Ireland, and I think it came back here, back to the US, but it was, it was, it was great. We were gone for months and it was, it was a really great experience. Um, I, I, I love that. And, um, I'm, I'm still friends with some of those people as well. That was a great, it just kind of threw me into doing it well so uh, and then i came back I, essentially that would have been your grad school 
I mean, if if you were that, looking at it, exactly. Like, that was grad school exactly. for you. Exactly. Yes. 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 That's right. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. It was grad school. Yes. Because it was on that tour. It was a, a bus and truck tour. <laughs> so, um, you know, you had to Wait, learn okay, to make your so voice work. It was it was bus and truck in the UK. It was, <laughs> it was in the UK. You were touring Ireland and Scotland and, you know, well, you weren't touring Iowa. Right, we were in Nottingham and all of that. <laughs> okay, so you were not slumming it through the Midwest. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I have nothing against the Midwest. No, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are so right. You are so right. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so right. You're so right. Um, but it, it, even then, like, you know, the bus would be late getting to certain performances. <laughs> no, no. And so you'd have to warm up as you were getting into costume and makeup, and it was like, how are we going to make this work? <laughs> But I learned a lot. I learned a lot on that yes. tour. Um, and I, I would say it's because of that tour that I, you know, have to sing 7 o'clock in the morning. I can sing 7 o'clock in the morning. You know, it doesn't matter. I can do anything. I can, you know, whatever. Because it was because of that tour. Um, um, can I go back to Juilliard for a second? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Um, I, you know... I, I want to, and if I'm jumping the gun, let me know. No, you will never. This is about... your interview, my friend. It is yours. You do what what you will with it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there were teachers at Juilliard who were really, really uh, important, I think, to to my development. Some more than others. I think they all were. <laughs> but um, Ed Berkeley, uh who passed away um, maybe about six months ago <sighs> was a uh, was our drama teacher for for opera singers, um, and he also directed certain operas and opera scenes. Um, and I remember uh, that I, I was cast in the role of Papageno, um, who's the bird catcher in the Magic Flute by by Mozart. And uh, I was trying to play this <laughs> this bird catcher um, guy, you know, in, in this Mozart opera. And um, Ed had this way of just kind of looking at you mm-hmm. while you were doing your thing. And you never knew what he was thinking. And so after I finished, um, he was like, okay, all right, just, just stop, just stop for a second. And, and I was like, what is it? And he said, Steve, don't try to play Papageno as you've, you know, seen it all these years, either in opera or in, at the time, video. Um, play him as Steve. You know, find th- those emotions and really just convey those emotions as Steve. And then the character will will come together. It was the first time... It was the first time since I, I mean, it was probably the first time ever, but certainly in New York City. And you know, when you come from somewhere else and you come to New York City, everything else is like, oh, I'm in New York City. I'm going to learn from these people. Yes. Um, so, of course, there were things that I'd either forgotten or had just chosen to, not to remember right. uh, in terms of my certain training because I was in New York City and I was at Juilliard. <laughs> and in that moment, Ed helped me remember everything that was valuable, everything that I'd learned that had gotten me to Juilliard, and helped me help put me back in my body, um, mm. on the stage, mm. and 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 that moment was another aha moment. That kind of every time I'm on stage now, I almost every, almost every time I remember what. Ed just said, just, you know, find the emotions, which is how I started 
It's just how I started. It's how I, why I told you that I fell in love with opera in the first place. Absolutely. You know, you needed someone to. And so Ed needed, did that for you me. You needed someone to bring you back around to. Yes. Where you started. Yeah. In the first place. Yeah. Why you started yeah. Yeah. in the first place. Yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. I hope you've learned something. I hope you feel enlightened. I hope you feel lighter than you did before you entered. Subscribe and leave us a review. Tell us what you liked. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Tell us who you'd want to see. This is Denise Wood saying, see you next time. Come back next week for part two.